game. That's what I did. Like you, you give me something, and my work ethic speaks for itself. Okay. You give me something good. Okay. So, okay. So uh, we making we making two grand. We 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 rocking. What happened? Yeah. You know, ah. So. I, I, you know, you know how it is with relationships. You know, you, sometimes you don't let go of that bad thing that's holding you back. And I took my ex out there with me, and it went from again. Here I am trying to make something work. Like, all right, maybe we can make it work on two different trucks. Maybe we can do this. And went out there, and it was hell on earth. It was stressful. I started not wanting to work. I started slacking up on work. I mean, it was just everything just started to hit the fan at one time. Everything started to hit the fan at one time, and because I lost, I lost your, focus, and I became distracted. Because you yeah. brought your, your, your significant other in there. Yes, yes. See, that's we, that's, we that's were why still you fighting. Oh my God, that's that's why you don't that's why you don't do that, man. That's that, that's totally messy. Let me ask you this: If you hadn't have brought them in there, would you still be with them today? No. No, I, I wouldn't be with them today because they paid so well, they paid so much that I would have had a truck by now. I was, that's the path that I was on out there. And when I finally left, I left from out in the oil fields. So within three months in the oil fields, I think I banked at about forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000. I was somewhere close to that. I had banked to about that much. And I was making money out there in the oil fields because it can only go up. You can pay, that company was paying you for everything. That company was paying you for everything. So, literally, I was banking that much. And when I left from oil fields, I, you know, I was still spending money, taking trips. I left out of there with about fifteen, sixteen thousand in my bank, in my account. And I, and I mean, this was within a short period of time. I left from out there with that. And I said, fuck this. I was too mentally disturbed from the relationship that I just took time off and I just blew through $16,000. <laughs> wow! That, I blew through sixteen thousand dollars. Yeah, that sound that sound like me when when me and my uh uh my me and my ex wife when we separated that uh that 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 night I went out to Baltimore. Yeah, yeah, wasn't was wasn't wasn't pretty, man. Let's let's just say that the bank account was looking good at the beginning of the year and looking sad at the end of the year, man. It was just. It was horrible. <laughs> man, uh, I'm, I'm already knowing. All right, man. So uh, I think uh, I think uh, FedEx was the last one. FedEx is definitely the last one. I, I have uh, two more companies in between, and then FedEx is the last one. Okay, okay. Go ahead. What are you? All right, so my next one was uh, my next one was Spartan Nash out of Midland, Georgia. Um, they were a good company to me. Starting out, I was making like eighteen hundred dollars a week after taxes, and I was home every day. So I'm like, oh shit, I'm making a lot of money. What was I thinking? I should have came here a long time ago. And, and being home every wait, 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 being home every day and still bringing home eighteen hundred after taxes. Being home every day and bringing that home after taxes. Oh, okay. I thought it was oh, a, I thought it was a joke too. Oh, oh, okay, man, we're, we're we, you you found the grail. You found the holy grail, bruh. Eighteen hundred dollars every did. week after taxes, and you're home every day and weekends. Home every day. What's the what what Weekend. bro? What happened? They started they started messing with the pay. Uh, corporate. I guess they noticed that. I guess they noticed they were paying us too much. Corporate started revising the pay. And it messed me up because I was at the bottom of the totem pole, the seniority list. So corporate went in and said, hey, we're going to change this. We're paying y'all too much. And I started going from 1800 to 1100 to 1000 to 500 oh, oh, every week. Oh, and I could have survived off that. Oh, 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 bro. Oh, oh, wait, wait. You're already in with the company. Why are they, mess why are they messing with your money? This this whole new money, I mean, this whole new pay scale should be on the new people that's coming in, not the people that's already working. What's what's the deal with that? I man? had that. I can't answer. I can't answer you that. I really do not know, and it really messed me up. It messed me up really bad because at one point I'm thriving. I'm thriving in life. I'm making great money, and they just decide to mess with 
the pay. And this here is another major carrier. So you, you're starting to see the pattern here with these major carriers. They don't pay you what you worth. They pay you what they think you're worth. Wow, that's crazy. So it was time to bounce, huh? Did what was the what was the way you bounced up out of there, man? You just told them like, yo, y'all messing with my money, I'm gone. I, 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 how how no, did you step up? I just I just left. And I didn't put in a two weeks notice. Uh, I had threatened one of my managers at the time. He sent me out on the route to Chicago because now they're not giving me military and dollar generals no more. They're giving me out the windows and saying, hey, this is all I have, so you have to take it or you don't get paid. So I ran up to Chicago one weekend. He gave me a bad trailer. I'm out there literally nigger rigging the trailer. Like literally in, in, in every essence of that word, that's what I was doing to get the reefer unit working. And when I kept explaining to him what was going on, my trailer is only doing so much. I have the wrong address to the location in Chicago. I got associates that are going to unload me. It was just crazy. And he blamed me. His name was Hector. He blamed me and said I was the reason why everything was happening the way it was happening. I'll never forget that phone call. And I remember just being on the phone with my manager. And I just, I, out of a rage, out of a fit, because now at this point, I know companies are playing with me and I'm just losing my mind. So I started punching the cabinet, hard to tell in the truck. And you can hear me going, ooh, 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 just hit it. I'm hitting the cabinet. And I tell my manager straight up, listen, really at that point losing my mind because here we are yet again, you know, still relationship problems. And now I'm being blamed for everything that's going wrong that's beyond my control. As a driver, that's beyond my control while I'm just trying to do my job. Wow, man, that's crazy. All right, Sparta Nash, what's the, what was What's the uh what's the la what's what's the uh next to the last one? All right, so Town Creek Landing Timber. This is another small carrier company. Um I would rate them an eight out of ten. I would recommend, but make sure your AC and your truck work in the summertime. <laughs> <laughs> so what was your Make sure the AC work. What was your uh what was your experience with them and why did you bounce from them? So they were a really good company. Um, I, only, I ran from Tuscaloosa, Alabama to Atlanta every day, $250 each, every run. So I would do about five runs a week, and I was still, you know, bringing home about 1200 something like that. Like, I was I was really making 1500 a week, and after taxes, I was still bringing home about 12000 of that. Um, that was a really good company. Uh, the people there were very friendly. Um, it's a small company. They need a uh, better building for drivers because they didn't have anything for drivers. Um, and my experience with them was very, very good because they taught me how to haul hazardous material and uh, the tankers. I hauled 3257. And, you know, everything about them I liked. They were just the company that I liked. I didn't, they didn't call me. They didn't bother me. They were a small outfit. They paid really well. Um, it was just I couldn't deal with the truck breaking down all the time. I truck breaking down, the truck had too many AC issues in the summertime. You know how it is when you roll your window down in 80 degree weather and it feels like hell on earth outside. Yeah, and then inside the car, it feels like, yeah, it feels like hell. So I got tired of going to the shop to get that fixed. I got tired of it. So that's what ended up happening. I had to leave them because you get fed up with just shitty equipment. You, you get fed up with shitty equipment. All right, so the last one is uh, you 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 found the holy grail. You found the holy grail again. So are you are I, are you with FedEx now or or that or that was just the last company? Before no, you? I, I stayed with FedEx for three years. Uh, FedEx was really good to me. Um, and it wasn't FedEx; it was the contractor that I was with. That was amazing to me. Uh, it was Cornerstone, SCE, Sean Callahan Express out of Atlanta, Georgia. Um, that man, Andy, was amazing to me. When I tell you, the first year I wasn't making as much as I was my last year with them, which was two years going on three years that I was with them. Uh, I made a lot more money. I made. Uh, I was in a six-figure game by the time I left. Him. Uh, he was amazing. Everything about him was cool. He was very understanding. He worked with you. He did everything. But within that three-year period, I had went through 15 co-drivers. 15. So you was team. So you was team driving. So this. Uh, so is is Fed is. So normally FedEx is 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 for teams. They're they're not. 
there's not too many solo drivers with with FedEx. No, there's uh, so many different entities of FedEx. You have FedEx Express, FedEx Freight, FedEx Ground, uh, FedEx Home Delivery. Uh, you have so many different entities, and I work for Ground. Um, just because we all had we shared the same name, did not mean we all worked together. Oh, okay. So with FedEx Freight, that was local solo drivers. FedEx Express, local solo drivers. FedEx Ground is every package that you order online that gets delivered through another third party company or whatever. That's what FedEx is stepping. That's like UPS, SD, SIA, you know, LTL Freight. The, the, the companies that pull two trailers. That was what they did. They they transport mail and freight. So right. that's what it was and all. Uh, now you, um, you you say you went through fifteen coal drivers? Fifteen. Was 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 it was was it because was well was was it because well I, I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but was it oh, because what was it because of your lifestyle or or was it because of something else? No. So I'm very vocal and honest about my lifestyle. I'm not hiding from anyone. It took me a long time to get here. So my lifestyle was never an issue because I usually have the best experience with straight male drivers, which one of them we're still friends to this day, and he's Jamaican. And he knows about my lifestyle. He knows I'm gay. He's a 40, 40 year old man, and that's my big brother. So my lifestyle was never an issue. It was just, you know, you know, being confined to a small space with somebody, again, you know, it would drive you crazy eventually. Especially if you two operate in two different ways. I'm a very clean driver. I'm a very tidy driver. I'm a very professional driver. Meaning, if it's not about work, I really don't care to talk about it. It's not that I won't talk and engage with you, but don't expect me to do it all day long. Don't expect me because I'm a nice person. And, and one thing that I do have is a heart. I've never, you know, never have looked out for my co-driver. If I, if I got it, you got it. If you, if you need some help this week, I got you. Because we're a team. That's what we're here to be. But I started having too many issues with so by the second day, and I'm 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 just gonna go ahead and be very honest with you. He was smelling like hot ass and wet dog, and I would <laughs> beg this man to take a shower. Yeah, I, I'm serious, and this no this is no game. This is this is my life. This is real life, and I would beg this man to take a shower, and he refused to take a shower. I even offered to pay for the shower. He just would not take a shower, and. I just told them I couldn't team with them. So I was having issues like this. I had another older driver. He kept locking us out of the truck. And the first time he locked us out, he blamed me. The second time he locked us out, he blamed the truck. He would never blame himself. He would never take accountability and own up to, you know, what he has done. So we were always getting locked out of the truck. I had another driver. She was very, for a woman, she was very unorganized. She was messy, dirty, nasty. Um, wig in the windshield, paperwork everywhere, trash everywhere, and I told you I'm a very clean driver. Um, she actually had an accident in the seat one day. Her, she her, had, her period came on, and wait, she had yeah. she had what? Her cycle came on, and she had an accident in the seat. Oh my god, that's crazy. Yeah. So that's why people people really don't know what comes with teaming. So when I heard the story where the co-driver actually killed his co-driver, I said, yeah, that sounds about right. They don't understand that people drive you crazy. I had a black Trump supporter. We teamed together. We were friends. But I never knew his political views because when we're on the truck, none of that matters. I don't, I don't, I don't judge you for who you support. I don't judge you for what you stand for. He was a black Trump supporter. Well, you see, well, and, me, uh, that, and that's one of the re- main reasons why I I never team with nobody because see, number one, when you team and you really got to be in tune with one another as far as as far yeah. as what what goals you guys want to set. You can't have a person on there that want to go home early. You can't have a person on there that want to do this, and it, it, it got to be one with the truck because the truck is one with you guys and yeah. cleaning hygiene well let me let me tell you what my nose are my my nose are no political talk no religious talk uh and if we're and if we're different color no color talk 
you know, because, you know, you know, when when a white person comes in with a black person, they always like to say, oh, well, you know, I I got a black friend. You know, one of my, I, uh, well, you know, I, uh, my, my friends are black and I don't want to hear all of that. Yeah. OK, whatever. We're here for one common goal, and that is to make money, try to make this bag, try to make it work. If it works, it works. And if you can agree, and if you can agree to all, I mean, to all of that, then we're good to go. Here's some other issues that I have. You got to be clean, bro. You got to be clean. Yeah. You know, you got to be yeah. clean. You got to take a shower. You got to, you know, uh, you know, I understand we get in some places where we have to turn around and take bird baths and shit like that. I get it, bro. But, yo, I, I can't sit next to you and you smell like hot chicken grease, bro. That ain't going to oh, work. Chicken grease, that's it. That ain't going to work. That might be better than what I used to smell. Man, that, 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 that ain't going to work. I like I like to be fresh. I'm 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 like outcast, so fresh and so clean. I got cologne in the truck. I got, you know what I'm saying? I like to be fresh, my teeth brush and all like that, man. I you need you you need to go take a minute, go wash up or 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 take a shower or whatever you need to do, man, because it's me and you in this truck and we're not going to we're not going to go down 100. We're not going to go down 3 4 500 miles down the way. And you and you smelling like hot cooking grease, man. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. Yeah, and and that was that was the issue that I was just having with some of these people. You know, um, you know, with him, he wanted to argue. He was a black coach before. He wanted to argue about stuff like that. And he would just say, literally, he's a white man in a black man's body, a racist white man in a black man's body, because he was he he just the things that would come out of his mouth. Like I was like, you're a black man. He said, actually, my my family is Irish. And I'm looking at this black man like, brother, how do you? Where, I, but you know, that, hey, that's how you feel. I can't change the way you think. I can't change the way you feel. So I used to tell him, hey, listen, we got one job and one job to do. And that's job this truck. They don't, they don't pay you to get on this truck and, and talk politics. They don't pay you to do any of that. So if it ain't, if it's not, if it's not about this job, leave it off the truck. Your personal life is none of my business. And that's where drivers get it wrong because they want to be best friends. They forget you're here to do a job. You know, I had another driver. You know, I told yeah. that's that's why you know I got a you know I got I got I got a truck driver. Well, I got a few drivers that calls me up because you know they consider me as a mentor and all like that. And I I tell them I said, look, you know, one one of which is out training now, and you know she was you know they was just saying about you know, the trainer, this, that, and the third. And I was like, looky here. All right. Yo, you, you, you're not, you, you're not there to make friends. You're not there to make friends. You're there to soak up as much knowledge that you can get from this person so that you can move on to the next level. And that next level is to get your truck. That's it. And people, people forget that all the, all the time. They, they go to these companies and they think everybody is their friend. No, everybody is there to do a job. So do what you get paid to do, and that's your job. Exactly. Exactly. Well, DJ, man, yo, I, man, bro, I, I had a great ass time conversating with you, man. This was up. Yo, let's try not, let's, let's get back together again and, uh, and do it again, my G. Oh, let's do it, man. Listen, I'm always here. I got a bunch of stories for you. You just let me know where. All right, that's what's up. <laughs> All right, guys, that's going to do it for the Lockout Men podcast show. You guys know that the best conversation starts over here with the Lockout Men podcast show. If you guys want to jump on, y'all know how to do it. Hit that line, 216-600-2090, and we'll get it in just like my man DJ right here. DJ, man, I appreciate you coming on. You stay safe out there, bruh. And everybody else, y'all stay safe out there, and we'll get back together again with another one. You guys stay tuned. Peace. I'm like Beethoven with the bass on it. Me, class kids, it went pop. Death to the hater won't stop. Let's talk key scales, it won't drop. You don't even need a scale to know I'm on top. Me and Mozart, bars, you got pops. Urge writing the Tiffany, a whole symphony. You a symptom to me, but go off. Or make a masterpiece for you, or at least it's gonna hit like rum, pum, pum. Y'all fit to me like the symphony. Your career's done, done, done.